love to proclaim over and over. The first is not knowing, coming with no preconditioned idea of what's going to happen. Totally being open to the situation. Second, bearing witness, rocking, really feeling what's going on. And that's what I hope we will all do. We will block what's going on. And third, action. Do something. That is, just to listen and just to say, wow, look what they're doing. That's not so exciting to me. The Montague Farm Zendo is a local Zendo, which serves a local community. But it also is a mother house Zendo for Zen peacemakers. So it captures the spirit of Zen peacemakers, which is not just meditation, but also action. The Bodhisattva ethic of vowing to help and relieve suffering of all beings, um, and the great teachings of interdependence, um, loving kindness. So the Buddhist tradition uh, clear, is hard to imagine without social engagement. And so what the Buddha does is to discover all of these multiple aspects of the Dhamma and then proclaim them to the world. And for this reason, the texts say of the Buddha that he is the one person who arises in the world for the welfare of the multitude, for the happiness, out of compassion for the world, for the good welfare and happiness of deities and human beings. The whole of the Buddha Dharma, I would say, I decided to start, uh, depends in terms of the possibility of an extraordinary person, an extra which means an extraordinary world, extraordinary world, expanding awareness to omniscience, Sarvajya. Buddhism has been engaged since its inception. I think the idea, that is, <laughs> Buddhist monks and nuns teach, they're engaged in education, they're engaged in medical care, they're engaged in other arts and skills for the community. You know, it's the bastion of culture, okay, but also service. And service is one of the things I want to talk about today. So I think that type of engagement, to think that that type of engagement has not been part of Buddhism always, is to accept a colonial view, I think. Most NGOs, the majority of them, collapse within 10 years, vast majority. And the reason is not that there's nothing to do, or even that they can't find resources or funds. It's mostly that they disintegrate from within, precisely because of those clashes of egos and all kinds of human factors, which are in a way, signs of we are not quite yet ready to be at the service of others. We need certain qualities that do come from inner transformation. Thus have we heard. There were, there were a lot of themes emerging yesterday. It was very rich. And um, one of the themes that I heard emerging was a theme of victims and perpetrators. We heard Paula, we, Paula Green quote the Dalai Lama, saying peace is a manifestation of human compassion. We heard Jan talk about the difference and the gap between so-called elite, so-called white, so-called American convert Buddhists, and then the so-called ethnic immigrants who brought their Buddhism with them as baggage from Asia. And she talked about some of the history of this gap. Well, I abandoned any identification with Buddhism, uh, but I feel a little bit of solace on that score because, you know, the Buddha wasn't a Buddhist. And, uh, and, uh, and in fact, the word Buddhism, as I understand it, I think I learned this first from Stephen Batchelor in his book, uh, Awakening of the West, which is a fantastic history of the relationship, that Buddhism is actually a term that uh, Western Western religious and uh, sort of philosophical types who wound up in Japan and, and uh, China uh, coined to explain to themselves who these people were because they had big statues of Buddhas and it seemed like, oh, they have, we have Christ, they have Buddha, okay, we, I get it, we get it. But they didn't get it. 